Hey guys, did you know that there is something called a wrong oblique pen holder? Well, there is. In today's short episode, I'm going to teach you a few things you should keep in mind as you go in and buy your next oblique pen holder. Welcome to the Calligraphy Academy and I hope you enjoy today's video. Alright guys, so I have over here two oblique pens that I'm going to use as a reference for today's video. This one here is a Speedball plastic oblique pen holder. And this one here is an oblique holder by master penman Michael Saul. So first of all, let's talk about this oblique pen holder here. So this plastic Speedball oblique pen holder is one of the most basic obliques on the market. Um, it can cost you anywhere between three to five dollars, um, US dollars, and I do not recommend this pen. Um, and the reason why I do not is actually, let's just go into why are the things you should keep in mind um, as you purchase your oblique pen holder. So the first thing you want to notice, uh, you want to keep in mind as you are looking for your new oblique, is how and where your nib or your the tip of your nib is aligned to the center of your pen holder so let's let's start with michael's as an example so as you can see if i imagine a line running down the center of the oblique pen holder um, so you're going to need some imagination for this one i can totally see the tip of the nib touch that imaginary line through the center of the pen holder. However, in this speedball um, oblique pen holder, you can see that the nib extends way out. That is not acceptable. So if, if you look at, let me try to focus that, perfect. So another way to look at it is like this, is that the tip of the nib lies exactly on the center top of my pen holder. This is exactly where I want it to be, which tells me that this pen holder has been made perfectly. The finish, the angles of the pen, the geometry between the nib and the pen holder is just where I need it to be. So this thing here. However, in my plastic oblique, you can see that it's anywhere but center. The nib is extending too far out. This is where it should stop. Let's see over here, but look where the nib is extending to, all right? So that, this is the first thing you need to check to make sure that your nib to pen holder geometry is correct. The second thing you wanna keep in mind is the angles between the axis of the nib and the axis of the pen holder. So starting with the with Michael's pen holder. So as you can see, this is my axis of the pen holder, and this is the angle or the axis of my nib. So it's this versus this. They do not lie on the same line. However, with the speedball plastic pen holder, the oblique pen holder, the nib axis is the same as the pen holder axis. There is zero angle between the two. So you see that? Whereas this one has a slight angle, they're, they're different. All right, now let's talk about why these things matter. So the first and foremost thing is that when your nib is properly aligned to the center of your pen holder, your nib is more balanced as you write. The second thing is that this writing position is more ergonomic as compared to this one where your nib is too far out. Um, in my regular writing position, and I'm gonna show you a different angle too um, later on in this video um, so you get a better idea. Um, is, is this, this is too far out, like when I'm writing, 
this is not comfortable for me this is not the best position for me however when i use a, a, a custom fitted um, pen holder this is much more ergonomic and my writing experience is way superior than using the plastic pen holder the other thing is when the angles when the angles between the axis of the nib and the pen holder are just right it gives me a much smoother paper to nib angle which simply means that when i'm writing my nib is less likely to catch on the fibers of the paper as opposed to if my angle between the nib and the paper was too steep again i'm going to show you uh, this this um um explanation in a, in a different angle in the video but this is the main thing to keep in mind like the small thing like the angles between the nib and the uh, pen holder or where the tip of the nib lies as opposed to the center of the pen holder can have a huge impact on your writing experience all right guys so i've changed the nib angle uh, sorry at uh, the camera angle to show you this um, concept better so as you can see, if I were to hold the, the pen holder in my regular writing position, this is where I'm at. Look how steep that nib angle is. It's so not ergonomically comfortable and it's not ideal for writing because it's my nib is going to catch more frequently um, the fibers of the paper, right? So this is my writing position. However, if I'm using the correct oblique pen holder, look how drastically my nib angle changes it's 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 insane right so this is going to give me a much smoother experience as i write plus it's so much more ergo friendly as well the other great thing about using a pen holder that has a brass flange is that you can adjust the flange for any nib that you're using what i mean by that is Currently, this flange is adjusted to fit a Nico G nib. The Nico G has a different curvature from, let's say, a um, Bross EF66. So if I want to use the EF66 with this pen holder, I can easily do that. What I'm going to do is simply I'm going to remove the nib, get my EF66, put it in, and simply tighten up or adjust the flange using pliers. This simply means that you do not need to buy a new oblique pen holder for every single nib that you're using. However, with the plastic speedball oblique holder, because its curvature is fixed, right? So this little hollow area is where your nib goes. I am severely limited by the number of nibs that I can use. I can only use the nibs that are of a similar curvature um, as the Nico G. In fact, I've tried using um, the, the Zebra G, which is sort of similar, but it won't fit. It simply slips out. So with, with this plastic holder, I'm severely limited by the number of nibs I can use. Whereas if I'm using a pen holder that has a brass flange, um, I can easily adjust that flange to whatever nib I'm using at the moment. Before I leave, keep in mind, you do not have to invest a lot to get a good writing experience. Um, in addition to these two, uh, when I was just starting out, I also invested um, in this pen holder by John Neal's Booksellers. Um, however, when I got it, the angle, the flange, um, it wasn't properly adjusted. So I did have to go back in and make sure. So you can see like these tiny dent marks here. So that's where my plier kind of, you know, squeezed in the sides to allow my nib to fit in there at the correct angle. Um, so I did have to go in and adjust. Um, as for the prices, like I mentioned earlier, the speedball oblique costs anywhere or, uh, approximately around five dollars. Um, if you have no other option, if you have no other pen holder nearby you, uh, this is great. You know, by all means, go ahead, use this if you do not have another choice. However, your next best, best option is this um, brass adjusted um, oblique pen holder. Thing, if I remember correctly, this one cost me about anywhere between $10 to $15.
so not super expensive either however i did have to go back in after i bought the pen holder and adjust the flange and my third uh, investment was this pen holder by michael sal um, this one's made out of black palm wood and for their quality and their craftsmanship Mike's pen holders are actually pretty reasonable. Um, this one cost me $50. Um, and e even though I have these other pen holders e as well as the straight ones, I don't use them. This is the only pen holder I use because the writing experience that I get from this is way, way, way superior than any others. Now that said, there are chances that you will find oblique pen holders that are around $200, $250. They're super pretty, they look great, but I cannot say what the writing experience with them will, will be like. However, if those pens have this shiny brass flange, you should be able to go back in and adjust them. So that was all for today. Um, it was a lot of information packed into this short time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I will get right back to you. And if you think you know of someone who might enjoy this video as well, please share it with them. I'd love it if you could take two seconds and hit subscribe. It would mean the world to me and I will see you again next time. Take care.